Alrighty, hello and welcome everybody. This video, I've been promising I was gonna make this for so long and I'm just getting around to it. So I'm so sorry for that, but I know that this video is something that I so badly wish that I had when I was in my undergrad for dietetics and also when I was looking to become a dietetic intern. After I went through the internship, I just felt like there were things that needed to be talked about that no one really does. I mean, I remember talking to so many of my friends and professors and just people in the field, and yet no one really wants to tell you the real tea about the dietetic internship. And the tea includes the good, it includes the bad, it includes the stuff that you learn, the stuff that you should learn and maybe don't, the things that you need to know, just going into your internship. And I wanna try to break that all down today. Of course, this is from my experience. And I don't wanna be here to say anything negative about the dietetic internship or to come across as if I didn't enjoy my experience or that it was bad or anything like that. I literally just want to share the facts that people don't share because I hope that this video helps people that were in my position become even more prepared for when they're going to do their dietetic internship because I think that in order to get the most out of it, we really need to be better prepared and we really need to be better equipped with the things that, not necessarily the education, I mean obviously your school is gonna provide that, but the things that maybe we're not told and that really do help to create the best experience and so that's what I'm going to try to share today. So I'll give a small little background that I went to the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences to do mine, and I was actually based in Norman campus for a lot of my rotations, so I stayed in Norman. And first off, I just wanna say that I feel so incredibly blessed to have had the opportunity to do my internship, and it is an expensive process, which I'll get into in a little bit. And I never want to make it seem like that's not something that I feel or that I don't recognize how seriously grateful I am for this experience. And I would not have changed a thing about where I ended up going. For me, University of Oklahoma Health Sciences was the perfect choice, um, just for so many other reasons, uh, such as the cost of living out there and the ability to customize my internship. And overall, it was just a great fit. I really loved that for me, and I never would change it if I had another option. And so I want to start off today kind of talking about a little bit of not the application process, because I actually do have a whole separate video about the application process, tips, all that good stuff that I'll link up down below. But more of the like, once you're accepted, what does that look like and getting prepped for the internship. So we're gonna start off there. All right, so it's match day, you get accepted, it's the best day of your life, you feel like a weight is completely lifted off your shoulders, and you are just like, frick, yes, we made it to the dietetic internship. At least that's what I was like. And it was just such a huge relief, and yet, the next thing is, is then you start thinking about, okay, well, what are the logistics of this? When do I start? What do I have to get ready? Where am I gonna live? Do I have roommates? Am I gonna know who's in my program? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to say, every single program is different with this. But I do want to warn, there is a chance that your program is not that organized. So in my program, we found out in, gosh, whenever it matches, I can't even remember anymore. And then we found out more defined details very close to when I was going to move out. So I was a special circumstance actually, because I was doing this specialized rotation in sports nutrition, which first of all was a freaking cool part of my internship because I had the opportunity to personalize it. But for me, that was also meant that I literally had a five day turnaround to get down there to start my internship. And there wasn't a lot of information or help on where to live or if you could have roommates. We didn't even know actually who was in our program at the time. And I've heard so many different programs say different things about this. One of my friends literally had a group chat and a group me created 
like 35 minutes after they all got matched to the program and their director put them all together. So I think it differs per program to program, but I think the biggest message I'm trying to send here is don't expect it to be like college. Like, you know in college how they send you, okay, now pick your dorm, okay, now search for your roommate on room serve or whatever it is, and all of those steps, and they really walk you through everything. Most of the times in an internship, it's not going to be like that. Because the thing is, is now you're viewed as an adult. You know, this is more of like a grad school or a further in education than it is your undergrad. And so I would say that the biggest thing with this, just like you've done all throughout your dietetic, uh, brain fart, schooling, is that you need to take initiative, find out where it works for you yourself, be searching, be on top of it the whole process. Now, most directors are truly there to help and they're always there to answer questions and your director is going to be your best friend, but definitely make sure that you are doing your own research, looking up places, contacting the director to get set up if you do want a roommate, if you do want someone in your program, all of those things because it's not gonna be like college where it's a lot easier most of the time to like have it all step-by-step -step laid out perfectly. All right, so then you gotta complete all the freaking internship forms, which I just would not think would be that in depth. But it's like, you know, you've got to go through all the school forms that they do. You have to figure out how you're going to finance your internship. Does your internship do loans? Can you do it through paying for it just on your own? Does it go under your name? Are you trying to put it under your parents' name? As well as, which hopefully you've thought about this before applying as well, but you still have to figure out the logistics as well as if you're going out of state, what are you going to be bringing to the internship? Do you have your car, which you need for most internships? Have you set away a way to budget for each week as you're going into it? There's just so many things that you don't think about that you'll need to do to prepare, including even getting vaccines, your updated shots, all of that stuff for when you're actually working in the hospital. And then just making sure you also have the clothes. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how much we needed the clothes and definitely reach out to your director because for example, for us in food service, we had a polo that we wore every single day as well as pants. So I would have been wasting like money to buy something else and he told us that. So I just had to buy the pants. But you're gonna want your professional clothes for when you're in the hospital and as well when you're doing your community rotations. You may need different types of clothes. Like I did one for OU Sports Nutrition so I had to go out and buy athletic clothes. They could only be Nike. You may need to do them for different internships like maybe you wear scrubs in your clinical, maybe you don't. And you wanna make sure that you know what those are too. So, so much communication going on with your personal preceptors or with your director most of the time because you probably aren't actually talking to your preceptor yet, but again, every program is different, to make sure that you have the right stuff set up for when you're getting out there. Now, once you get out there, I just want to remind you that every single intern, even if they don't act like they are, is terrified none of us know what's going on we're all overwhelmed we have no idea what's what to expect what people are going to be like are they going to be friendly are they not are we going to get along are we not getting along and this is going up to also differ how much time you actually spend with people in your rotation per the internship that you do now for us we had this little like one week orientation that was like a boot camp where we went over everything including the internship and how to log hours and how to just do all of the things you know what I mean and yet at the same time you still left that and you're just like what am I doing because once you get done with your orientation for my program which is very similar for what I believe a lot of programs it's again, not like college. Like you're not hanging out with these people every day. You're not seeing them every day. You're all at different rotations everywhere. And so in some internships, you do work together a lot. You see each other a lot and that's awesome too. It will just depend. But don't expect it to be like in college where every day you're going to the same class and every day you see those people, right? Because you're going to different locations, all of that good stuff. So you kind of have to learn how to rely on yourself. And now there's still projects that you guys can work on together and all of those good things. But it just is a different feeling as a dietetic intern than when you're in your dietetic undergrad. I don't know why I keep forgetting those words. And orientation is overwhelming, okay? Especially if you start going over clinical stuff again and thinking through that and it's 
scary. You're like, do I remember this? I'm gonna be working with patients and with food service. You're like, is it gonna be horrible? And with community rotations, just even figuring out your rotations and where you're going can be so freaking stressful. But just keep it in perspective that it's new for everybody. Even when you go to that new location, you're a new experience for that preceptor. And everyone in your internship class is going through this with you, including even your director. This is a new class for them. And so no one fully knows the ropes completely. So I just think that's important to do. Definitely get people's numbers at orientation if you have one or before then so that you have someone to chat with, to talk to, because they're most likely for every single program based off the requirements of an internship are going to be projects. So I think everybody kind of gets this idea when they're going through theirs and it was something I know I asked about a ton because I did not want to be so bombarded with projects. I wanted to be able to really immerse myself in the experience, but every internship has some form of project. And some of these projects are a little bit insane. Let's just be honest, especially some of my other friends at programs have some really crazy intense projects. And so you definitely want to be able to have people that you can talk to in your internship, that you can bounce ideas off of, all of those good things. Because as you can imagine, especially when you're first starting, it can be a little intense. Like you're trying to remember the projects, you're trying to remember the rotation, remember people's names, remember what to do, soak it all in, but also be receptive and also offer ideas. And you're just like, ah, right? And so I would definitely, as I said, get people's numbers, chat with them, Make sure to keep in contact because you'll all be able to help each other out. And it will depend on your program, but for my program, everybody was going through different things at different times. So I started in community rotation. I had a girl that started in clinical and a lot of people that started in food service. And it was just different for every single person. So you may not be going through the exact same thing at the exact same time as everybody, but then if you're not, you can also get tips and pointers from other people as to how they did things, what their location was like. And even though it may be different for all of you, it's always helpful to get other people's opinions and ideas. And now some rotations and some internships, actually everybody does the same thing. Say it's all based at one hospital, you may all be going through and you do your clinical together and you do your food service together and you do everything together. And that's great too. It kind of just depends on the program that you picked. Okay. I feel like I've been yabbering a lot and I really hope this is making sense, but I thought it would make the most sense to go through it chronologically. Now I feel like when we start talking about the real internship, like the real deal internship part, is when we get into the tea, okay? The tea and the tips, right? We gotta get some water for this. I'm already getting slightly parched, I will not lie. Okay, I'll just take a seat. So, yet again, I just wanna stress one more time, this is just my experience. Now I am drawing experiences from other people that have gone through programs that I know of, that I talk to, that I'm friends with, and just kind of like putting those in there as well. The thing about the internship is, first of all, it's not paid, right? And I think that this is something that should be more clear when you're actually going into your undergrad in dietetics, because I remember it was my sophomore year and all of a sudden, actually no, it was my freshman year, my second semester, and we had a speaker come into Nutrition Club, which I was like, went to Nutrition Club, thank goodness. And she goes, oh yeah, and for your dietetic internship, and I was like, hold up, wait a minute. Rewind, what is that? And so no one tells you about the fact that you have to do this internship and then on top of that, it's not paid other than a few ones that you can do like VA and stuff like that. So I think going into it, we all kind of have this mindset of like, all right, so I gotta work for free and pay tuition to go to locations to work for free. And now I'm not degrading the importance of learning from people or from preceptors and all of that stuff. And this is not even hating on the internship process itself. Actually, I don't know who I'm hating on, but most of these preceptors guys don't even get paid. And so I think that this is very hard because if you look into other fields 
like if you're a PA or if you're a nurse or if you're studying to be a doctor and you're doing these rotations, almost all the time these people are paid. And so when you look at that, it's just a little bit uneven for not only the preceptors, but also for the students, the people that are going through this. And I will not lie to you, it was really freaking hard, okay? My parents didn't pay for my internship and I didn't want them to. And so I had to make sure that I picked a program that could take loans. And I was lucky enough to be able to take them through the school, which is a lot better than having to take them privately. And so it was a real blessing for me. And yet at the same time, you know, when you think about the fact that you're working for free for a year, paying money to not really go to school, but more to just go and rotate different places, it's definitely a hard pill to swallow. And I don't think, I think part of the thing that you remember as a silver lining before we kind of move on past that is everything that you learn, it just reminds me there's a reason why I'm here. There's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. I do this because I love it. I do it because I want to help people. I do it because I'm passionate about it. And it's not just about the money. But yeah, it is the hardest part, I would say, because you're not getting paid. And then also, dietetics jobs don't pay that well. Let's just be real. They don't pay like if you were to go and to become a doctor or a physical therapist or whatever else it is. So it's just something that I think is an underlying challenge of the entire internship that wouldn't be quite so prevalent and quite so challenging if that wasn't something that's kind of constantly playing in the back of your mind throughout the experience. And I do think it's something you have to overcome and be strong through because what is the point of focusing on the negative and you should be thankful for your whole experience, but still. I digress. I know that's a little bit of a hot topic, but I just think we need to bring it up and be more real about it because for someone that doesn't have a lot of finances, it was stressful for me. And so I would definitely suggest thinking about a budget. How are you going to afford this? What is it going to look like week for week for you? What is your rent going to be? What is your grocery bill going to be? Are you going to be able to do a gym membership? What is that going to be like? How are you going to preserve your mental health with also not spending too much money and it's a very real and important thing to talk about especially when since you've graduated a lot of other people are going through and getting their jobs and getting real life stuff going and just be prepared for that feeling of comparison of challenge of something that you feel like you know in the end it's going to be worth it but sometimes during it doesn't feel good now that we've gotten through that little beginning segment. I really want to dive into basically the real deal of the internship, the rotations, because the rotations are really what do make the internship. Like that's what makes the internships special, what makes you learn the most, all of those things. And I kind of want to dissect the different ones. So to begin, I started in community, so I'm going to start there. And I had some very unique rotations. For example, my first one I did in sports nutrition, which was really cool because I got to customize it to me and I had done tons of work in sports nutrition. So I knew what to expect going in, but this ended up being um, with preseason football camp. So I ended up actually doing 115 hour weeks. So <laughs> as you can imagine, it was a little bit intense. There was no days off. You were working every single day and then Following that, I went into other community rotations because we did different ones for each of ours. And some of those, I would be all the way in Oklahoma City, which was 40 minutes away. I did one an hour away. You did some for a week, you did some for two weeks. Every single time was different. And I think that's the biggest thing to remember with the community rotations is they're all going to be different. Even if it's like, even if you stay at the same place the whole time, just know in the back of your head, you have to be adaptable. And that's a key throughout the whole internship, but especially with community guys. Because I think the community was a rotation that tested me the most in terms of what I was paying for. And because I'm not gonna lie to you, some of the community rotations are the most fun for sure because you know, you're going out into the community, you get to see some counseling, you get to talk to people more one-on-one, -on -one, and you don't always get that in your um, undergrad. But 
Also, some days you may not do anything. So for example, one day I cut a bunch of pieces of paper and another day I stuffed some goodie bags. And you know, those are kind of the experiences where you don't do anything in the day that you're just like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And yet at the same token, there were really cool experiences I had where I got to go behind the scenes on, scenes on a news channel. There was a time that I got to give a nutrition talk. There was the dialysis clinic that was so freaking cool. Don't sleep on dialysis, I always say this. And you learn so much and my preceptor was freaking amazing. But I just know from experience of a lot of my friends that some of us, we had the most challenge with community because you just didn't feel like you were always getting that much out of it. And it does depend so much on your preceptor because a preceptor is truly make or break. There's some freaking amazing preceptors that no matter where you go, will go out of their way to make you learn, to help you, to ask you questions, to get to know you. And they make the internship so worth it, which is why it's so important that we thank them and give them so much praise because as I said, they're not getting paid. And then there's some preceptors that are fine. And then there's some that maybe are not your favorite at all. Maybe they tell you the wrong location to go to and you show up there and they're not there. Maybe they don't give you instructions that are exactly right. And Okay, sorry, we had a quick camera dying situation, but we're back. And we're back to talking about what we were going through with preceptors. Don't you think I forgot? I remember this. <laughs> I feel like my diet and I get your chips off like I was gonna plan this all out and I was like, honestly, I know exactly what I wanna say. It just sticks in your brain. But anyway, so another thing to think about kind of on the terms of directions and all that stuff is definitely to be prepared. And this is something I'm not always that good at, to be honest, but to have different things to fit different occasions. So like maybe you wanna have a nicer big purse that you can take things in. Maybe you're fine with having your backpack every single time. You'll definitely maybe want a small bag that you can take with you, have snacks, have tampons, if you're a woman, obviously, have like emergency like chargers because you don't want your phone to die if you're driving an hour away and then you get lost and you need directions back and your phone is dead. Like think of all of the little things that you may need, pens, paper, like notebooks, Always remember your little ID thing, have your badge, have an extra sweatshirt, have a pullover, have tennis shoes, just have all of the things that you may need. Maybe not tennis shoes for everyone, but like I did one where you would go and dress nice and then it was an after school program. So afterwards I would change it to gym clothes and they'll usually tell you that, but I'm just saying like be prepared. A lot of the times they don't say that, like obviously they're not gonna handhold walk you through, but sometimes it would be nice to know and always, 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 oh my gosh, I cannot say this enough. Always leave with extra time. Not like 15 minutes, not like 20 minutes, not even 30 minutes. I would literally almost leave with an hour of extra time. Not like for if I was driving 10 minutes away, but say I was going to a, a further away location, I would just go super early. And I know that's annoying, but the thing is you don't know about traffic. One time I was in traffic for almost 35 minutes. And the last thing that you want is to show up to a location late. It just looks bad on the program, it looks bad on you, it looks bad to the preceptor, and you just do not want it. I'm telling you, just go early. You can chill on your phone, you can catch up on things, and not every day of that week, but like at least the very first day, leave early. I'm telling you, it is worth it. I think another thing that's important with community is a lot of people, if they don't wanna go into clinical, most people wanna go into community. Let's be honest, not a lot of people are thinking about going into food service. And sometimes you really have to advocate to your for yourself to get involved into scenarios. Some preceptors, as I was saying, are great about it. And others, not that they're not good at it, they just don't always think about it. And so say that you're really interested in counseling. You may have to ask like, is it okay for me to sit in on this counseling session? And sometimes they may say no, and that's okay too. And you can just say, oh, can I ask you questions about it afterwards? Or whatever else it is. Or maybe you really wanna give a lesson plan, or you wanna try to do that, or a cooking demo, or whatever it is. 
you may just have to say like, hey, can I do this? Before, because otherwise sometimes you just don't have the opportunity because you didn't ask. And that's how you make the most of your internship. You can't always just do it by not taking the stand, not asking for things. And it's a fine balance because you don't want to be annoying and like impose on them. And you also don't want to be the person that lets the whole experience go by or seem like a lazy intern by never wanting to do anything, never having drive, never like creating your own projects even. And just like continually asking like, is there anything I can do? Is there something you want me to help you with? And that's the hardest thing in community because sometimes there's like not anything to do. And that's just my experience, but like, just make sure you keep asking. You always jump in there if you can. You say you can shadow people. You offer to help with educations. Do things that are helpful, not like extra work. Like, hey, can you explain my entire like blah, 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 blah of how you do this? They're gonna be like, I have to do other things. But, oh, hey, can I help you out by taking off an education plan? Yeah, something like that. Especially during like a WIC rotation, which everyone does. They'll do little education sessions for the moms and the babies. And that's a great way to get some, your foot in the door of doing that. And I have actually such a funny story about this. So in Oklahoma, sorry, it's a little loud outside. I don't think it's surprising, but the fair there, like the state fair is a really big dealio, okay? So, Basically, one day I had to do a food demo for this senior nutrition program. So we would go into nutrition homes and like give this little cooking demo. And it was super fun. And then that night I had to stay because it was in Oklahoma City and I didn't want to go home because it was like a 30, 45 minute drive for me. So I had like my whole little cooler all laid out, like it was all ready to go. And I was going to do my cooking demo in the morning, which I did some peanut butter bites. And then at night, I was going to be doing this beef council thing. So it was at the state fair, there was this like whole setup. I should, I'm gonna try to find a picture. I think I have one from my director that he sent us. And it's like on a stage, right? It's like the real deal. So me and this other girl were doing it together. And we're like, what is this gonna be? Like, no one has told us anything. We're communicating with this woman like Carrie or Terry or something. And Terry doesn't know what's going on. And she just like tells us to show up. And we're like, okay. Anyways, long story short, we get there. It's a whole freaking podium. You're wearing like a microphone. We had no idea. It, we thought it was gonna be a little booth that people would come up to for like one to two seconds. It's like a cooking demo. Like you're literally up there on your own, me and Cameron, my the girl that I did it with, like doing our full freaking meal. And it's an hour long segment. And so we're like, what? So when we're walking up, First of all, they don't recognize that we're there for the things. We had to get our director to come to let us in. We finally get in. Cameron has this whole thing that she's prepared and then it starts spilling everywhere and we're like, oh my gosh. So then we're picking it up and then we're running into the place and we like barely get up there in time. They don't have like pots and pans and all this stuff. And anyways, it was just like one of those quintessential dietetic intern moments where they don't tell you how to do something, you have no prior information, and you just freaking make it work. And honestly, that is one of the things that I love the most, is it makes you so adaptable. If you don't know public speaking, you're gonna learn public speaking. If you don't know how to kind of like shoot the crap, you're gonna have to learn. And so that's just a funny example from community, like this random thing that we had to do. Oh gosh. So now let's go into food service because we were kind of talking about that in terms. And I would say the food service is sometimes really enjoyable and people like it more than they think and other times really crappy and challenging. Like, oh, Milo. Okay, thank you. So no one goes into their internship, I feel like getting excited about food service. You know, it can be long days, it's not glamorous. You can be working literally like a worker that's not getting paid well. You know, there could be a lot of turnover. You're usually in a hospital or a facility that just doesn't have that, the best means, the best income, all of that kind of stuff. So there's definitely challenges of food service, but you also can a lot of the time really learn a lot. And I do think it helps you to set up for your RD exam because 
you know, it's like what dipper sizes are you using? Like, what is the flow of the kitchen? Are you doing a cycle menu, a static menu? Like, you learn a lot of stuff, especially with how our project worked. We had this whole thing that we had to like plan and put together. And you could do like revitalizing an item on the menu, or you could do implementing a more sustainable option or whatever. And it's gonna be different for everyone, but I feel like a lot of people have a similar project. And I think that I learned a lot with that. Now my food service was very, very different than your typical and I loved it. I was with my friend Alyssa and we just had the best time together. It was actually at University of Oklahoma, like on the Norman campus. And so we worked in like all the different dining halls and we worked with an allergen specialist. So we learned a lot about basically different people's allergies and all that good stuff. Now, there were a lot of times where we felt like we were doing pretty much nothing. We had super flexible schedules, unlike a lot of people didn't. I knew some people in food service that literally worked like 10 to 7 p.m., which is horrible. There are other people that would have to do shifts at 5 a.m. And we got so lucky with our schedule. So I would say the food service schedule itself can be really challenging because you can be thrown in there like a worker. They won't tell you exactly what to do some of the times. Like maybe you're doing the tray line one day, then next you're doing like serving and then you're on the cook line. Like, so you're just doing a bunch of different stuff. But a lot of times you are busy and you're kind of moving, getting everything done and so it goes by quick. There is sometimes issues, I would say, with like poor management and food service. I know some people in internships or other internships that did struggle with that, but obviously that could happen in any part of your internship. So it shouldn't be like cornhold, cornhold, what? Like put into any certain specific rotation. Now for me, we were actually not that busy. So this was another one where sometimes it was just like, I don't know, when it ups and flows where we just weren't that busy and it's like, what are we doing here? Like sometimes it was nice, but sometimes it's like, you know, come on. Like, but overall we really enjoyed that rotation. I say we, cause I'm always talking about Alyssa and I, cause like we are literally the same person on that rotation, which is a cool thing if you ever do rotations with friends. Like I got so close to some of the people that I did rotations with and that was really, really fun. But even from other internships, sometimes I would rotate at the same place. It was pretty rare, but it was cool to get to know like other people as well. So yeah, that's just something to think about. And I would just get and go into food service with the mindset that it's going to be your most challenging, but that you're going to learn a lot. And then if it's easier, then it's like a bonus. Like a lot of people loved it and that's great too. So just kind of keep that in mind. A lot of time you have more intensive projects during food service. Cause you know, just like all the stuff you learned in undergrad comes to life and real deal, like stocking systems and just everything about it. So sometimes those projects are the most intensive, but also can help you really learn a lot, especially a lot of people don't think about this, but just a little tip. If you want to go into sports nutrition, which like a lot of people do, right? You need to know food service like the back of your hand. You're gonna have smoothie bars, you're gonna have fueling stations, you're going to have team dinners and team meals. You have to know food service for sports nutrition. So if you're interested in sports nutrition, think in the back of your head, food service is gonna help me for sports nutrition, that's my main goal. I know that's only for certain people, but even like in hospitals, which I'll get to in a second, a lot of the dietitians that work in the hospital may have to do both if you're in a smaller hospital or just know and be knowledgeable about stuff with that. So food service really does carry into almost every single dietitian job because it's literally working with food. I don't know why I keep doing this, but it's just really important to keep that in mind and think about that. And now for clinical. So I feel like I was the freaking luckiest girl in the world for my clinical, for my specific scenario. So I would say when you're looking at dietetic internships, clinical is one of the biggest determinants of like the internship you should go to. So I, not a clinical gal, I appreciate it. I think it's cool. I think it's amazing, but I don't see myself in a hospital. I actually like the work of clinical. I like the pace of clinical but I don't actually like being in a hospital. I just don't really enjoy the whole system. So I actually chose an internship with a shorter rotation. It was only nine weeks long, which is pretty short for clinical, but I feel like I got 
everything that I needed out of it. And I was actually in a small rural hospital, so it was an hour drive every single day there and back, which was crazy, down these like windy back roads that you literally couldn't see anything. And to give some context, it was about an hour and a half away from the location of the Tiger King. So I just wanna say that those people that you see are real and we had tons of patients just freaking like that. So that's the cool thing is you really get exposed to so many different types of people in clinical, different cases. In clinical, you truly, truly feel like you get to put your knowledge into action. I think you feel that way more than when you do in community and what you do in food service. Like you just feel like, okay, everything that I learned that I work for in M&T classes, in M&T lab, and all that good stuff is actually coming to life. And yet at the same time, to be honest, it is terrifying. Like when you're going into your clinical, you're like, do I know enough? Like, am I going to be able to figure this out? Do I need to remember PN and TPN and PPN? And do I need to know how to do two feeds and all of that stuff? And I just wanna let you know that I heard this from every single person, is that you don't need to know everything, but you do need to show that you are willing, You, but you do need to be able to take your own learning into your hands. So for example, like they don't accept you how to do a perfect PN, like infusion on your own and calculate it all perfectly and all that stuff like right when you get to the hospital, right? You're gonna be shadowing people, you're gonna be following people around depending on your hospital size. Maybe you're going to different dietitians, maybe you're same with the same one, but you just need to be watching, learning, have a notebook, write things down, remember what people are telling you, and always, if you're not sure about something, jot it down in your notebook and go search it up to be ready for the next day. That is the biggest tip I can give you is seriously just take your own learning into your own hands like don't rely on them to do everything for you but also don't feel the pressure pressure to know everything perfectly and not not ask questions because when you really think about it someone's life in your hands and you don't want to go about prescribing something and not asking questions just because you're nervous about it so you have a really long period where you get to shadow and you get to learn because those first few days your brain is freaking all right and I loved learning and I really loved the fast pace of the hospital. And even I was like, whoa, I am freaking tired. And it was a good tired, like a learning tired, but tired, you know? And then it's so funny because as you progress through your weeks, you just get better and more comfortable and you'll start to learn things and they just come back so quickly. And you also have your little guidebook, so I'm trying to remember the ones that I would suggest, but there's that little handbook that has it, and if you can get your hands on the food medication interactions, definitely suggest it. But also, I'm trying to remember, I think it's like a pocket, a clinical pocket guide, I think is what it's called. There's like multiple people watching me right now from the other balconies, and I, they, I think I don't see them, but like I do see them, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, back to the video. So then as you start to learn, the cool part of it is depending on your, you know, your skill set and how comfortable you feel, you'll have a preceptor there to really push you. And you know, some facilities have a bunch of preceptors and that can be challenging because you're gonna have one person that will tell you something different than another person that will tell you something different than another person. And you have to be flexible and maybe change how you learn something from your education. And also like change the way that you chart for a different dietitian. And you may be learning something different every single day from every single person, which yes, can be very hard. But also remember, you can always ask questions. That's what every single person says, ask questions that you don't know about but you also may be at a hospital like mine and I only had one dietitian I worked for. She was my main preceptor obviously and it was amazing. Like she was so helpful and because of that, I got to do so many patients by myself. Like I know some people that literally by their second week they were doing all the patients on their own and then I know other people that only got one week and the clinical staff were leave to do patients. So just remember it's all a part of your journey and it's okay to be flexible. You don't have to do everything exactly right the first time. You don't have to have this structured plan with it. Just go with the flow. So this video is getting really, really long, but 
I just really want to get everything out there. And so I just want to do a few like ending points on the dietetic internship portion before we talk about like quick graduation stuff slash post-grad. Not like too much of that. But I think the biggest thing is, I don't know if unless for clinical, which clinical I do think is really important. Like you learn so much, you completely transform your clinical skills, you put them into action, you feel very purposeful, and most people feel that even if they have bad preceptors or bad experiences, you do feel like you learn a lot. But just be prepared in your other rotations, you may not feel like they were necessary. I'm just gonna be honest, it's true. You know, you may feel like you learned a lot, and you may feel like you really didn't learn anything, or you're like searching for what you learned. And I think that it's important to remember that's okay, because at the end of the day, what I remind myself every single day about the dietetic internship in that portion of my life, is I learned so much about myself as a person, about my own resilience, about how strong I can be, about things that I can get through, about what I can do on my own, about the knowledge that I had and that I learned, and it gives you this sense of confidence that you really need coming out of your undergrad to feel like you can bridge that gap between undergrad and becoming a dietitian. And I think that is the purpose of the internship. And so I really wish there were a lot of things that they would change. I think the intern should be paid. I think that preceptors should be paid. I think they should be more clear about the fact that not every internship is going to be amazing, that sometimes you're not gonna like preceptors, that not every preceptor is that nice, that it's not flexible, that it's sometimes really hard to do things outside of it, that every internship is virtually the same, even though we put so much into the fact that they're so different, and yes, they are, but also they're not. And like, I do just think there's a lot of aspects of the dietetic internship matching process and everything that need a little revitalization, okay? And it's not like everybody cares about what I have to say, but it's a lot of money to go and work for free, to further your own education and just learn about yourself. And I don't know if like, I feel like what I paid for in terms of actually what I was doing was worth how much it was. That doesn't mean I don't see value in it. Doesn't mean I would change my whole path. I still would have done it. I still would have become a dietitian. But just taking into account what dietitians are getting paid right now, and how hard it can be to get a job outside of becoming a dietitian, it's a lot to ask to go and pay for a year plus and pay a lot of money to do that. Now, there's so much that you can learn and I just think that there's a lot of knowledge that dietitians bring and I think there's so much importance in having new interns in there to advocate for the dietetics field, to bring new ideas, to collaborate with old dietitians, old as in like veteran dietitians that have been doing it for a while versus new dietitians. And I think that's awesome. But I just wanted to make this video to be a little bit more realistic because even after you graduate from your internship, it's not easy. Some people get jobs and I would suggest trying to apply to jobs before your internship is done or right when you're doing your studying for the RD exam, which let me know if you still want a video about the RD exam. But yeah, just be thinking proactively the whole time because it's not always easy to get a job. It can be competitive. A lot of people want you to have experience even though you just finished your internship and it's hard. And so my internship, I would say, did a decent job of prepping you. So like we would have class days every like, I don't know, was it like three months? Yeah, like three months where we would do like a workshop and go and do a field trip and learn something like a resume builder or do this or that or that. And I do feel like I learned some things during those. All right, we keep having technical difficulties and my camera keeps wanting to die. So we're finishing on my phone and maybe it's a sign that I need to stop jabbering. But I just, there's so much that I wish I could say and so much I wish that was said before I started my internship. I just think we really need to be more transparent and more honest about this whole process, what it looks like, the challenges of it, the fact that not everything is perfect, that it's not what it looks like, that it's not just something that you have to say to every other intern, oh, it's just something you can, you have to get through. We shouldn't all just be getting through this. We should be, first of all, knowing more accurately what it's gonna look like. Second of all, 
finding silver linings underneath it if we do all have to go through it. And also, is it third of all? <laughs> third of all, advocating for it to improve. Advocating for pay, advocating to your director that you want to be able to have a say in the rotations you do. Advocating for ourselves in general and the value that we bring and not standing up for things that aren't right. I just think it's important that although we are thankful for this opportunity, we remember we have a lot of value. We have a lot of purpose. We're paying a lot of money for this experience and what we feel and how we're doing also should be valued and is very important. Um, and as I said, we did do a before and after test in mine. It helped me a little bit with prepping for the RD exam, but I wouldn't say it was the most accurate. A lot of programs do that. It's like a benchmark test you have to pass in order to move on to the next steps. But the whole RD exam is a whole nother thing. And in my personal opinion, I wouldn't plan on studying for the RD exam before when you're in your internship. I would enjoy your internship get the most out of it, focus on what you're doing while you're in it before you start studying. That's just my advice, but obviously every single person is so different. Um, I really hope you guys like this video. Sorry for the shaky ending. I'm literally like moving around because you guys know I talk with my hands and so not talking with them. It's a challenge. Um, but yeah, I just always wanna create this content as someone that is now a dietitian, which I still can't believe because I wish that it was what someone else would have told me in the past and I wish that we were more honest. So let me know if you like videos like this. Let me know if there's other topics you want me to cover, other things you wanna see. Comment down below where you're at in your dietetics process or comment down below if you're not a dietitian or you're not in your dietetic process, but you're just interested in this because I watch videos about things I'm not like even ever going to do all the time. Like the other day I watched like a full video on what was it? Like not consulting. I can't remember what it was, but like this whole occupation that I would literally never go into. And if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around here soon. I share all different types of content, dietitian content, personal trainer content. Oh, sorry, my finger. Um, kind of just like intuitive eating and lifestyle content in general. That was a horrible description. Anyways, if you want to stick around, please do. I'd love to see you back here. I post new videos every week and have a great rest of your day. Bye guys.